Wait, what? Is Tylenol or acetaminophen really toxic? Social media has been abuzz with misinformation about Tylenol. Should it be avoided? Will your child get liver failure? Is this over-the-counter medicine actually safe? This video will talk about those trending topics and hopefully help set the record straight and ease any worries you may have. Hi, I'm Dr. Mona Amin, a board-certified pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand evidence and experience-based information so you can make the best choices for your child. If you are looking for a simple way to stay up to date on pediatric health news, childhood development, and parenting tips, sign up for my newsletter. I send weekly updates and information directly to your inbox. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Pete's Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on the latest videos and new content created. And here we go. So have you heard any of these concerning ideas about Tylenol? For example, that Tylenol should never be used for children, that taking Tylenol during pregnancy can cause ADHD or autism in kids. How about that Tylenol is killing 100,000 people each year or that Tylenol is toxic because it decreases glutathione? Today, I'm going to break down each of these ideas and separate fact from fiction. First, let's talk about what Tylenol is. It is also known by the generic name acetaminophen and is a common over-the-counter medication used in children and adults to manage pain and reduce fever. In many countries, it's also called paracetamol. I'll be referring to Tylenol as its generic form acetaminophen for the rest of this video because that is what is being attacked all over social media. Acetaminophen is also a common ingredient in other over-the-counter medications, including Dayquil, Nyquil, Mucinex, and Robitussin. It is marketed for many different uses, including relief from headaches, acute mild to moderate pain, coughs and colds, and fever. One misconception I've heard is that acetaminophen can't be given to children less than two years of age. This misconception likely comes from the label on the packaging that says, ask a doctor for the dose for children two and under. This is because acetaminophen is dosed based on weight and the dose will change as a child grows. And asking a doctor confirms you are using the medicine when it's needed and with the correct dosing. When children are smaller and weigh less, a few extra milliliters can make a big difference, which is why the bottle recommends consulting a clinician first. The good news is that as long as you have an accurate weight for your child, you can determine their proper dose. Dosing charts are typically easily accessible online or at your pediatrician's office. You can also check out my YouTube video about how to calculate dosage and more safety information regarding acetaminophen and even ibuprofen. Just a heads up, it involves math and cross multiplying, so you kind of have to like doing that. Another useful video is my Fevers 101, which goes into much more detail about fevers, how to check them, and when to treat them, which applies to this conversation about acetaminophen. Now, although acetaminophen has its benefits, if too much is taken, problems can occur like other medicines. One of the concerns circulating is that acetaminophen is toxic because it alters glutathione stores, which is a useful antioxidant. But let's break this down a little bit. When someone takes acetaminophen, the liver produces small amounts of a potentially toxic compound called NAPQI as it breaks down the medication. However, glutathione is present in our body to neutralize the harmful compound, making it harmless and easy to excrete from the body. However, at higher inappropriate doses of acetaminophen, glutathione is depleted quickly, thus allowing damage to the liver cells. Acetaminophen only becomes toxic or dangerous when too much of it is taken and there's no longer enough glutathione to neutralize all of the potentially harmful compounds. Overuse is considered more than four grams a day in adults, although some clinicians recommend no more than three grams a day. For kids, less than 75 milligrams per kilo per day or max 4,000 milligrams per day with a max of five daily doses. I also err on the side of maxing out at no more than three grams a day or four grams a day if directed by a clinician. If there's a history of liver damage, acetaminophen should not be given. Also, this video is important for me to make because for many kids and adults, other common OTC pain meds like ibuprofen, which is Motrin or Advil, are not always able to be given due to kidney failure or platelet issues. Also, when a child has gastritis or an upset stomach and needs a pain or fever reducing med, acetaminophen is preferred due to the way ibuprofen can irritate the stomach lining. So vilifying acetaminophen is not helpful when there is no risk when used correctly. Okay, now let's talk about another scary statistic that is circulating. A Facebook post went viral a few months ago quoting that acetaminophen causes 100,000 deaths per year. It understandably resulted in a lot of concern about the safety of this medicine. Fortunately, this statistic is not completely true. 
A study done by the CDC showed acetaminophen caused on average less than 1,000 deaths per year from 2011 to 2016. Various studies have shown on average 60 to 70,000 ER visits related to acetaminophen use, with the vast majority of these visits being from an intentional overdose. So yes, it is true that acetaminophen poisoning is the most common cause of acute liver failure in the Western world, but this is largely due to overdoses, both intentional and accidental. The reason the numbers are so high is that acetaminophen is so readily available. It is easy to buy and is the most common medication used to treat pain and fever in children and adults. As discussed earlier, it is also an ingredient in hundreds of other over-the-counter medications. So to avoid the risk of overdosing, it's always a good idea to check the labels of medications, especially when giving multiple meds to avoid accidentally overdosing acetaminophen. Use meds only when really needed. Follow dosing guidance on packaging and by the clinician, and watch my fever video for more guidance to reduce over-medicating when not needed with any medicine. Also store medications away from children, even if packages are childproof because kids are pretty smart. And if you're in the US, keep the poison control helpline phone number somewhere accessible in case concerns about possible medication overdose arise. Finally, some people have been concerned that taking acetaminophen during pregnancy can cause ADHD or autism in children. This idea probably stems from a research study done in 2018 that revealed a 20% higher risk of autism and a 30% higher risk of ADHD for children who had prolonged exposure to acetaminophen during fetal development. Importantly, the study noted that acetaminophen taken in small amounts for a short duration during pregnancy did not increase risks. However, this study and others have not looked at environmental factors, maternal characteristics, paternal characteristics, or genetic factors, which can heighten the chances of autism or ADHD. This shows that correlation does not equal causation. Autism and ADHD are complex neurodevelopmental conditions that are not caused by one thing alone, but instead are likely caused by a variety of genetic and environmental factors, genetic etiology being very high. These studies do not show clear evidence that proves a direct relationship between these disorders and acetaminophen use. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists reviewed all the research and subsequently released a statement in 2021 that they still identify acetaminophen as a safe medication when used in moderation during pregnancy. Again, the key is moderation. The consensus recommendation appears to be to avoid prolonged use of acetaminophen in pregnancy and use it only when necessary, at the lowest effective dosage and for the shortest time, and speak to your clinician if you're concerned. This is important as for many pregnant people, acetaminophen may be the only fever or pain reducing medicine that they can take given ibuprofen or Motrin is not recommended during pregnancy. So there you have it. I hope this information helps clarify any concerns you had about acetaminophen. In summary, acetaminophen is safe to use in moderation. If your child is taking any other medicine besides acetaminophen, it's always a good idea to check labels and discuss any prescription or over-the-counter medications with your child's clinician if you're not sure to discuss if any interactions or overuse is a concern. And remember, medicate only if needed and always follow dosing recommendations to avoid overuse. Make sure you scroll through my channel for my Fever 101 video, dosing videos, and more. If you have further questions or concerns, please comment below. And if you find this information helpful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel to be the first to know about new videos published. Thanks for joining me today and see you next week for another video here on Peds Doc Talk TV.